Okay. Uh, the first thing that uh, when we talk about the 4250, the first thing that we want to do is probably get it up to date, right? And we need to get it connected to our system so that we can do some of the basic functions. And so the first thing that we want to do is uh, we want to go here and on the back of the switch, on the back of the switch, there's a port that's called the OOB port. And this is basically a port that you can use to direct interface with the switch regardless of its configuration. Okay, so it's actually super helpful. I know some network guys that actually um, put these ports on patch panels and label those patch panels. And then when they're in their network room, they just click into that one with their computer and they can access the, the actual switch from there. Uh, the switch will have the same IP address on that OOB port. And so it's super easy to put your computer on that network port and then you know connect your, your switch to it. So let's go ahead. I'm going to, I have this cable pre-plugged into my computer and uh, I'm going to plug this into the OOB port. Now, uh, one of the things that you should do is we're going to go to our uh, control panel and let me share this on a secondary screen with you so that you can see what it is that I'm up to. Okay. So uh, we're going to go over to control panel and we're going to, oh, I'm over here in the corner, by the way. Uh, we're going to go over here to control panel and um, go to network and sharing center. And here we are going to go to change adapter settings. Now for most of you, you won't have like additional network ports disabled and that sort of thing, uh, other than your Wi-Fi, because you're a good NDI guy and you don't use Wi-Fi for NDI. Uh, so we're going to watch these network ports and the easiest way to find out which port is the one that you're using is just all the ones that are currently in disconnect. When you plug this in, it's going to query the, um, it's going to show activity on it. So what I'm going to do is plug this in into the OOB port. And we're just going to watch the actual network connections here. And boom, there's one that's called uh, Internet. And so this one right here that it appears to be uh, connected to. So this is the port that I want to use. And we are going to just jump. We're going to, whoops, it always opens on the second screen, which is why I want to make sure I'm doing this right here. But Okay, so it's going to open this port. Let me put this on the screen real quick. Okay, it's going to open this. If you double click on it, it's going to open this little screen right here, right? Internet status, double click. And we're going to say properties. Bueller. And then we're going to say IPv4. Double click on IPv4 and say use the following address. Now, we got to put this on the same network as the switch is, right? Now, the default as of today, is 192.168.0.239. That's the address of the OOB port. So I got to get my computer on that same network. So 192.168, uh, let's say 0. Dot, whoops, 0. 0.100. Okay, that's a safe number. And then our network mask, mask if you hit tab and it goes to the next one, it's going to fill it in for a single subnet. So triple two five five, which is fine. And here I'm just going to say 192.168.0.239 as the default gateway, which is this switch that we're using, right? So I'm going to go ahead and click OK and click OK. And now our network here is going to identify as network five and show that we're connected to a network that's speaking the same language for the most part. All right, so now we got to open up, you know, close all these. Now we got to open up Chrome and uh, I'm going to try and do this inside of an incognito browser. We'll see how this goes. Uh, and the first thing I want to do is acquire the firmware for my switch. So what I did was I typed in, in, in the almighty Google, Netgear 4250 dash, and then the number that's on the front of this switch. So that's dash 10G2F dash POE plus. And it came back with, you probably have the 4212P, which is correct. That's what this switch is. So if I click on that link, if I click on that link, there we go. It's going to take me to this support site, okay? And I just typed in like firmware download or whatever it was that I'm, that I'm looking for. This is take me here and I'm going to say downloads. It's going to oddly slide me down the page and then here firmware version 13.0.4.8 for 4250 switches with 16 or less ports there is my switch right there listed in the details so i'm going to click download and bring that now i've already downloaded the file uh spoiler alert okay now i'm going to open up a new window and i'm going to say 192.168.0.239 and it's going to take me to the web ui of this switch now also spoiler alert 
I have already logged into this switch because this is one that we had at NAB that we purchased. So I believe the login and password is just admin admin. Uh, correct me in the chat if I'm wrong, but uh, I believe the default is that, but you can find that in um, the manual that comes with the switch. So if that's wrong, just look it up in the manual. Uh, so I've changed the password on my switches. All my switches have different passwords and uh, you can click log in. Now, this is that user interface that um, is so legendary when it comes to the 4250 line. And the reason for this is, is that it's designed to be fairly user-friendly and self-explanatory when we are navigating the web UI of the 4250. So we've logged in. Now, the first thing we want to do is make sure that we're running the latest firmware. Now here, we can already see that we're out of date because firmware version 13.0.2.34 and I believe that it was like 0.4 point something, right? So we want to update that, make sure that we've got the latest. So here, we're going to go to maintenance. And we're going to say upload. And I've downloaded this to my desktop. So here it is right here, 4.8. We're going to say open. And we are going to upload. Now, this is probably going to take a few minutes, but we're going to let the switch do its thing. And it will probably take me back to the login screen when it's finished. Okay, so our web UI did come back eventually. That took a little longer. But hey, uh, like I said in the first uh, section of this tutorial is switches do take some time to reboot. And so we need to give them the appropriate time to do this. Now, we can verify that our firmware now is correct. So 13.04. Eight is what we are looking at now. So we're running the latest firmware, uh, and that is fantastic. Now, uh, let's start talking about just this dashboard real quick. This is a quick little snapshot as to what this network is doing. Um, we have, uh, in general, just so you, you understand, we have empty ports on this switch that are not connected to anything yet. We have power on each of these. These are all PoE Plus ports. This is a PoE Plus switch. Uh, so we have power available on a, each of these. However, there is a maximum budget on this uh, switch. And uh, I think it's, is it 150 watts? Is that what this one is? I'm pretty sure it's like 150 watts. So that's not a ton of power. Um, the switch will do what it can to manage, you know, that. And, and if you have a studio, you're running PoE. And so only issue 15 watts. Mm -hmm. If you have a camera, that's PoE plus, that's like 19 watts or more. And so it will do what it can to manage that and make the rest available to uh, the network. But the, um, the switch does have a maximum. And so you can't run, you know, eight 4K cameras on this particular switch because you run out of power. Uh, that's just reality. But um, know, know what power budget you have and how much you have to work with and then give yourself 20%. So the general rule is always give yourself an overhead of 20% on PoE and uh, everything will hum along just fine and you won't have brownouts and cameras that are randomly rebooting because they all of a sudden require 19 watts and not 15 and uh, and brown out and, and then go into a reboot cycle. So be careful with, with your power uh, budget. But this screen shows that I have power available to each of these. It also gives us a nice little quick overview as to what the switch can see about the device. And so tells us how much wattage is actually being used, tells us what VLAN the, the port is in. It tells us a bunch of things. Now, it also sometimes will tell you what the IP address is of the device that's plugged into this port. And sometimes it will learn the MAC address as well, but sometimes it won't. And so it's not a hard and fast rule. It's helpful, but it's not gospel. And so we need to be uh, kind of careful with that as we, uh, as we go forward. Now, uh, we also have a general overview of our configure profiles. We're going to get into that in a second. And uh, computer companies, networking companies, you know, companies that make stuff like BirdDog, we're getting a lot smarter with showing this stuff so that you can see what's going on on your network. And so CPU use utilization, how much CPU is being used on this switch, you know, of, of the onboard CPU inside the switch. Um, I said this one time to somebody, I said, well, there's, you know, managed switches, there are like CPUs and the managed ones will actually manage the CPU usage better than the unmanaged ones. And sometimes the unmanaged ones don't really even have much onboard power. And they were like, switches don't have CPUs. And I was like, yes, they do. <laughs> they 100% do. Uh, so there's CPU in here and there's also onboard memory. And these are the things that help traffic the data across the network. And so uh, it's important to know that.
Uh, finally, on the right-hand side there, uh, there are actually fans inside this switch. And depending on where you're installing them, you can turn them on full blast and they sound uh, like real deal fans. I'll, I can even do this. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it, but uh, but that's a doozy. You would not want to necessarily work in a room with these fans running like this. However, if they're in a headroom or in a, in a closet somewhere or whatever, you could run these at full uh, full blast because sound doesn't matter and uh, do it that way. So I don't know if you can hear that or not, but uh, it's pretty loud. And then we can also turn them down to quiet mode, which is what I suggest most people run these in, especially if the switches are in a place where they're going to be around people. Uh, quiet mode will at least keep the sensors cool and they will turn up if they um, re if the you know the actual switch heat kind of gets a little too high and so it will try and keep it quiet at all times now the other mode is off and this is ideal if you have internal cooling inside your rack because then the thing doesn't make any sound at all uh, but you can they actually make rack units that have like air conditioners in them basically that keep your whole stack cold uh, switches uh, you know you, you may not know this but switches blow the air from you know one side to the other like from, i think it's from right to left let's see or left to right one or the other that doesn't really matter uh and then servers go from front to back traditionally and so uh, depending on how you've designed your actual network rack and whatever that will dictate how you cool them but there are onboard fans um for the most part the quiet setting is good enough for having the switch in the room with you. The switch that's down there that runs all the cameras in my studio uh, runs in quiet mode and it generally can't be picked up um, from this microphone. And this one is now returned to quiet mode and it's awfully quiet. So that is uh, really cool. And you can change that right here on the dashboard. No need to go in to like maintenance settings and blah 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 it's just click one click and it does it and then it gives you uh the actual sensor temperatures and that sort of thing right here so you want to keep that as low as possible but monitor that over time especially after productions or during productions uh that's a good piece of information to know so that's our dashboard <laughs> <laughs>